Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very nice problem suggested by highly educated tracker. Thank you for your suggestions. I love them. So we have z minus i squared equals 1 and we're going to be solving this problem in three different ways. Okay, so I'm being lazy here because we already have, have all the uh, methods. So first method, we're going to go ahead and replace z with a plus bi. Let's do it. a plus bi minus i squared equals 1. And then now bi and i can be combined. We can write this as a plus b minus 1i squared. Let's go ahead and square this and set it equal to 1. So it's going to be a squared plus 2a times b minus 1i plus b minus 1 times i squared. So it's going to be minus b minus 1 squared because i squared is equal to negative 1 and this equals 1. Now let's go ahead and put the real parts together. a squared minus b minus 1 squared and 2a times b minus 1 i and the whole thing is equal to 1. Now we have complex numbers on both sides therefore we can set the real part equal to 1 and set the imaginary part equal to 0 because there is no i on the right hand side correct? So from here we get a system of equations let's work with the second one first this implies a is 0 or b is 1. Now, and going to the second, I mean, the first equation, a squared minus b minus 1 squared equals 1. And if a is equal to 0, and by the way, we forgot to mention, uh, since z equals a plus bi is our number, a and b have to be real numbers. Therefore, we are not accepting a equals 0, because if you replace a with 0, you get b minus 1 squared equals negative 1, as you can get from here. But that's not true for real numbers, therefore, this choice is not going to work. Make sense? So we have to go with b equals 1. That's the only option. So if b is equal to 1, then we get a squared minus b minus 1 squared equals 1. And if b is equal to 1, this is going to be 0. And from here, we're going to get a squared equals 1. And this gives us two solutions. As you know, a is a real number. There are two numbers whose square equals 1 and those numbers are 1 and negative 1. That means we have two options for A but only a single option for B and that makes two solutions because remember we're trying to solve for Z in this equation right and Z is a complex number and can be written as A plus BI therefore our number can be 1 plus I or negative 1 plus I and if you plug these in back to the equation, you're going to notice that they satisfy the original equation. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the second method. So the second method is basically going to treat z as a variable, and then we're going to be solving a quadratic equation. Let's go ahead and expand it, z squared minus 2iz plus i squared equals negative 1. Remember, i squared is equal to negative 1, right? So from here, you're going to get, if you bring the negative 1 over here, you're going to get z squared minus 2iz is equal to 0. Make sense? And from here, we can basically just factor out a z, and that gives us z minus 2i equals 0, right? And by the way, this is supposed to be a 1, so we're going to go ahead and subtract it, and that's going to give us a 2 here. So it's going to be z squared minus 2iz minus 1 minus 1 minus 2 equals 0. And at this point, you have a couple different choices. You can use completing the square or quadratic formula. I'm going to use the quadratic formula. That's what the instru instructions say, right? So z equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared, which is going to be 4i squared minus 4ac. That's going to be plus 8, right? So that's a positive answer, which is interesting. And then i squared is equal to negative 1. So inside the radical, we're going to have a positive 4, whose square root is plus minus 2, because we already have the plus minus. So it's going to be like 2i plus minus 2 
divided by 2. And obviously, we can write this as i minus 1 or i minus 1 or i plus 1, but that's better written as 1 plus i or negative 1 plus i. And if you compare these findings to the first method, we're going to get the same things. So there are two solutions, 1 plus i and negative 1 plus i. This is the second method. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the third method, and then we will take a look at the results from Wolfram Alpha. Okay? So the, for the first method, and I'm, I can kind of think about a fourth method too, which kind of goes along with the third one real quick. I can maybe mention it. But the third method basically uses Euler's formula. So we can go ahead and replace 1 with, we can replace 1 with e to the power 2 pi i. By the way, this is not the only way to represent 1, as you can Imagine it can be written as 2 pi n i, where n is an integer, because you're basically adding multiples of 2 pi to it constantly. So if n is equal to 0, you are going to get e to the power 0, which is 1. If n is equal to 2, we're going to get e to the 4 pi i, which is again 1. So any multiple of 2 pi will do. But let's go ahead and stick with, uh, with one solution, because the other solution is easy to find. I'll show you. So now let's go ahead and square root both sides. We get z minus 1 equals plus minus square root of this, but let's just take the square root of this number once, and then this is going to be e to the power pi i, because you are supposed to cut the angle on half, the Moivre's formula, right, the Moivre, and then from here e to the power pi i is equal to negative 1, and that basically gives us, this is supposed to be an i, and that gives us z equals negative 1 plus i. So, here, so here's one thing to remember. If e to the power pi i is a square root of this number, its opposite is also a square root. So we can also write z minus i is equal to negative e to the power pi i. You could also put a plus minus sign here, by the way, to get the same effect. And now e to the power pi i is negative 1, remember, because on the complex plane, you're talking about this number. So that's negative, uh, negative 1. So with the negative, it's going to be a positive 1, and we're going to get z equals 1 plus i as the other solution. And as you can see, this is going to give us the exact same solutions that we got before. Of course, that should be the case, right? So these are the solutions. If you want z sub 1 and z sub 2, you can go ahead and call them. Now let's go ahead and take a look. Oh, by the way, one, one thing that I was going to tell you is maybe like a 3b, or you can call this method 4 if you want. But you could also do the following. Square rooting 1 gives you two solutions. You could say z minus i is 1 or z minus i is negative 1. And then just by adding i to both sides, you'll get the exact same solutions. And here's the result from Wolfram Alpha, negative 1 plus i and 1 plus i. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.